Hey, sexy people. All right, you got duped. You got duped. Sucker. <laughs> All right, not fair. Not You're actually totally in a position now where you went against your moral code. Maybe you missed some signs. Maybe, you know, him only WhatsApping you because he didn't want your number to show up in his phone bill, you know, via text messaging or him only meeting for lunch because he had a whole family that he had to go sit down with and pray with. <laughs> maybe you just didn't see the sign or maybe there were no signs. Maybe you're one smart cookie, but he's just that good. He's just that good. Whatever the reason it is that got you unwittingly against your will. Okay. For those of you who are like, nah, I'm cool with the other woman role. Like, this is a video for you, but for those of you who don't want any part of it, you've come to the right place because this is all about how to let go of the bad juju that this man has brought into your life and move the heck on. All right, stick around. Welcome back. Tasha Caulfield here, writer, comedian, author of The Care and Feeding of Sex Symbols, here once again to help us smart and sexy, pretty messes feel more loved, secure, and on top of our world. All right, so maybe it was by hook or by crook, or whatever, this married man has lied to you and got you to become the other woman, the mistress. Maybe you just found out and now you're racked with guilt. You're like, you know, is this gonna go on my permanent record? <laughs> Maybe you found out a while ago and you're just like, all right, I'm ready to just move past this. I deserve better. I deserve a man who's gonna be honest with me and faithful and all that good stuff. Or maybe you don't care about any of that stuff. You're just like, eh, do I got to worry about karma or something? Like maybe I, don't, that's, I can't help you with that, but I can help you to get past this bad juju and move on after you've been lied to about, you know, someone's marital situation. Now for the record, let me just say that I'm going to be focusing on what you need to do for you. I'm not going to go into how you're, you might potentially be able to you know, help facilitate the healing for other affected parties like his wife or his kids or his mother-in-law or the dog or whatever. <laughs> like, you know, in my personal opinion, sometimes it's best to just go your own, you know, your merry old way and not further involve yourself in the drama of other people's marriage and, you know, just keep it moving. However, every situation is different and I don't know theirs, so I can't really you know, go that deep into it. So we're going to be focusing on you. Now, the most basic answer to, you know, how do you move on would be that you need to focus on the lessons that this experience is here to offer you. Like that's the best route to take. However, in order to do that, you're going to want to understand a few things first. First, as Brene Brown put in her book, Daring Greatly, you have to understand that there's a big difference between I did something bad and I am bad. And that difference is guilt versus shame. Um, if you take on the mentality of I am bad, like it's going to take you a lot longer to get over this whole situation than if you simply just accept the truth, which is that I did something bad. Um, you know, and if you did take on the mentality of I am bad, you know, the whole shame route, the good news is you're on the right track to getting over that too, because you've put yourself in this supportive environment here, you know, where you can get to a place where you can start talking about it and sharing your story. That's how you kill shame. Shame does not survive being spoken out loud. It does not like oxygen, unlike trees. <laughs> It, wait, trees provide oxygen, whatever. Shame doesn't like oxygen. Shame doesn't like, once you start talking about stuff and it'll just sort of dissipate as long as you do it with the right people. Cause if you, you know, start talking to a bunch of judgmental people about stuff, they could, they might just make it worse. So you share your story with people who've earned the right to hear it and that'll support you and kind of, you know, be gentle with you about it and understanding if you don't have a close friend or, you know, a family member or a counselor or somebody that you feel comfortable going to, 
I'll link to you uh, the related Dear Megan article where I talk about this. And in that comment section, I do regulate it. I don't let, you know, haters come through. So you can just blah your whole story there and just get it out and kill shame, assassinate it. <laughs> and don't forget to be mindful of your self-talk, you know, like, don't troll on yourself. <laughs> like, don't, don't bash yourself. Um, talk to yourself the way you would someone who you loved and wanted to support through this rough time. Remember that you are still this miraculous, super cool, super lovable creation. You just happen to have gotten caught up in doing something that you're not proud of, but you're still awesome. So mind your self-talk. All right, so now that you've killed off shame by speaking about it and minding your self-talk you have moved into the wonderful land of guilt yay congratulations here you just hate what you did <laughs> you just think what you did was crappy so this is a, a great stage to be because now this is just all focused on your actions which are changeable and easily and everything like that. Here you're accepting Maya Angelou's mantra, when you know better, you do better, and you're focusing on the lessons that this experience has to offer you. So you're thinking about, okay, what could I have done differently? Did you put more stock into, you know, his actions than, to his, into his words than his actions? Maybe you ignored some of the things he was doing. Maybe you ignored, even worse, you ignored your gut. Maybe you ignored your instincts. Like, what did this situation teach you about yourself and how you maneuvered through life and love and situations? Like, what are some of your triggers to act in a certain way, acting out of character, whatever. Like, sit down and write down all of the lessons that you've gotten from this situation so that it now builds you up into a stronger, better person, opposed to being one that you allow to tear you down. This is how you also get rid of guilt, because now you're focused on what you got out of it, opposed to what you did. You're focused on where you're going, not where you've been. And you can forgive yourself because you've seen how it's transformed you. You know, you can't, um, you know, learn a lesson before you've been given the opportunity to learn it. Like that's what life is. That's what life experience is. So you got the opportunity and you took it, <laughs> but you got it and you took it and you really took it and you learned what you needed to learn. All right. So now you are in the clear. All you have to do now is decide what you want to do moving forward. Since I wasn't there with you while you wrote, you know, the lessons you got or things like that. And I don't know your specific situation with this gentleman. Um, I can't tell you, you know, oh, you should be with him. Oh, you shouldn't be with him or things like that. What I can tell you is that when a man wants to be with you, he will move heaven and earth to make sure that that happens. Um, you know, if he has kids or something, yes, sometimes he has to put, you know, get his ducks in the row, but he won't ask you to do something that violates um, your moral code or will lose your trust or things like that. So those are things to consider, but you know, I, like I said, situations are different, so I can't speak on everything, but just know that, you know, know what you deserve and know how this experience has helped you to kind of really embrace that. And and just and move forward move forward with your head held high now being more grounded in your convictions and more grounded in your work all right like this video and subscribe hit the notification bell and until next time this is tasha caulfield saying stay sexy